Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Fast Pitch TV Show. I'm joined today by Glenn Moore. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Gary. I really Good to appreciate be here. it with the Baylor Bears. And he's going to tell us a little bit about Baylor himself and uh, a little history you may not know about Glenn that I find fantastic. Glenn, so how's life going? How's the team doing this year coming up? Thank you. We, had, we had a great fall and uh, got a lot of new kids, a lot of new faces, and a lot of excitement. And uh, hopefully we'll get things back on track again. But that sounds like a good plan. Now, something I wanted to talk about real quick that I just find real exciting. Every time, every time I see this person's films, I think of you for some reason, ever since you told me that you played with the king in this court and Eddie Fenner. I did play for Eddie Fenner. He was uh, obviously probably the most well-known fast pitch softball player of his time. And, uh, 1946 started a team called the king in this court and um, you know had pitched for you know, 50 straight years nearly. It's just amazing what the guy has done. And, Passed away unfortunately a couple of years back, but I had the opportunity to play against him out of misfortune, uh, play against the court whenever he had had his heart attack back in 1990. Uh, the day after that, I was scheduled to pitch against him. A young guy right out of college had the opportunity to do that, pitch fairly well, and, and they were looking for someone they could you know, do the trick pitches behind the back through the legs, blindfolded, and I wasn't into all that right away. I just wanted to compete and play, and uh, of course, that's what they needed right away. They had a guy named Rich Hoppy that could do all the trick pitches and more of the showman type, and I was still in my competitive mode, so uh, they picked me up to do the bulk of the pitching. He was a little older, and I was younger, and, and uh, you know, bulletproof at that time, so I did the bulk of the pitching for him for the first year, and then the second year, 1991, I uh, learned some of the trick pitches, and. Uh, had a little fun with it. The blindfold behind the bag, pick off at first base, those things. But, uh, played three years and it was a great experience. Got to meet a lot of the old timers, uh, great pitchers, and learn a lot from them, learn a lot from Eddie. And, um, you know, there's been less than 50 members of the King of Sport through that, that, that length of time since 1946. So I'm very fortunate to have had the opportunity to, to play with the King of Sport and Eddie Fainer and all those great players. If you're not familiar with the King of Sport, I'm telling you, get on Google, do a search right now for, for Eddie Fainer and the King of Sport, and you'll be amazed at what he's talking about here on the trick play. But, yeah, we played with four men, uh, no outfielders, pitcher, catcher, shortstop, and first base. And, as likened to the Harlem Globetrotters without uh, traveling with the Washington Generals. We'd go play whoever was you know, willing to play us. And, you know, by the time I came along, there were fewer men's fast pitch players, so we might face a, a female pitcher. And, uh, sometimes we were embarrassed by a female pitcher, but uh, you know we would, there were still enough teams to play two or three uh, really good teams, and we'd play the national teams for time to time and uh, one of the greatest games was against the Canadian national team and everybody knows how strong softball is, men's softball is in Canada so uh, one of my biggest memories was beating the Canadian national team and hitting a, a walk-off grand slam home run to do it. Four of you on the field. Four it's mine, Bob. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, it, it, it's, it is uh, and it's not. At the same time that you're playing with four defensively, you're at a weakness, but uh, pitching being so dominant in this sport that, you know, you're able to keep them, uh, you keep them from scoring a run or two or give, a, give up a run or two against the better teams. You batted nearly every inning with four men on the, on the field, so you would get seven or eight at-bats a game depending on how well you hit how strong that pitcher was. So eventually you should be able to score a run or two, figure out a pitcher and get to it. How did you get involved in softball? I grew up in uh, rural Mississippi, a little town of Liberty. Uh, I claim to fame as Jerry Clower. He was from uh, he was my next door neighbor, basically. Next door neighbor was two miles away, but uh, I grew up in an area where all the churches had fast pitch softball teams. And the women played slow pitch at the time, and the men played fast pitch. And my dad was a, a well-known pitcher, and, Holly saw it after him, and, uh, a very good pitcher. And I uh, had uh, five brothers, and we all played for my dad's team. We grew up uh, you know, weekends, uh, Saturday, Friday night, Saturday, and, and after church on Sunday. That's the way it was. You didn't play during church hours, but uh, we played softball every weekend during the summer. And the Fourth of July I was uh, always sitting under a tree eating fried chicken and watching softball. So it was a family event for me, and I had a a dad that was very good and taught us the sport early on in our life. So you didn't uh, come from baseball and start playing softball when you got out of school. You were playing softball. It was, it was just the opposite. It was just the opposite. Um, I played softball before I played baseball. And actually, um, a lot of people will tell you that you played both. It's, even though softball is bigger, it's, uh, it's more difficult to hit. Uh, 
it's coming from 46 feet. The men pitch from 46 feet, so I'm three feet further away from the batter than the college pitchers pitch in the ASA goal, and I think 18 and under is now going uh, at 43 feet, so you're pretty close. And we only had the rule that you had to have one foot on the pitching river, so we could leap and come off the mound and pitch from about 40 feet. And uh, throwing it in there at speeds of 70 plus miles an hour is not a lot of reaction time, and it's a pretty pitcher dominant sport. So uh, uh, you learn to hit baseballs by practicing on softball. I mean, I mean, it was softball was a much once you'd play a tournament of softball, then a baseball would look like a balloon or a basketball coming up to the plate. Well, Glenn, I appreciate you sharing a little bit about the King as Court and your background in softball. A lot of fun. I really appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, like I said, if you're not familiar with uh, the King and his Court, please do a search on that and look out for the Baylor Bears this year. Great. Glenn, Thank thanks you, a lot. Thank you very much.